Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Mets and Saga discussion panel. I'm Paul. This is Danny After Dark. Like and subscribe. And with us, as always, is Beckham After Dark. We have him right now. You're, yeah, his set is more After Dark than yours. I think we're going to call you Danny in overhead in the light. room. Yeah, Danny <laughs> in the light. Uh, Little Milky. That fucking comment about nipple riding guitar just made me laugh so hard. I was just cracking up. There was no way I was going to hold it together to start this show. There was no way. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. We're going to talk about what we were going to talk about last show before it got all messed up. And I'll tell you about how it got messed up. And I'll tell you about why we're looking at this, et cetera, et cetera. But first, uh, Danny, would you like to say hello to everybody? Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us, especially on a Wednesday, because we haven't been doing that for a while. But for the next few shows, it will be Wednesday, and then we'll be back to our regularly scheduled Thursday show. But hello, Russell, Sam Smith, Shelley, James Watson, Andy Bauer, Capone, uh family guy hello chris james of course a little milky uh clifford crawford sam smith oh gosh i can't i don't even know if i said hi to you but you know what hello sam <laughs> steph w hello uh let's see tina schultz welcome bill it's a different bill hello different bill a bill none i know <laughs> A different bill, nonetheless. Hello, <laughs> Ken Garcia. Hello, Kane. PJ Wolf Weimers. Hello. Uh, I think I'm almost through. Is this, is this Bill? Todd cooler? Gittins. Hello. One second, Beckham. Rich <laughs> B, Barb McLean. Anastasia. Discerning Light. Okay, I think I got everybody. Hello. Well, Clifford. I mean, that's the only reason we're doing Wednesdays. So. That's right. That's the actual reason that we switched it. Anyway, so so la I guess last week was it? Mm -hmm. We were going to do this, the myth and reality of the Horn Lake or Horn Lake, sorry. Horn that's Lake. Near that's near here. Horn Ave uh, gas station. And why the hell should we care about a gas station on Horn Ave? Well, here's the thing. In a couple of different places, it says that after the Tate murders, they went to wash up on a at a gas station. And it's in the Manson file and in the article that I put up at the top of this that starred. Um, it talks about this. And so there's two different places that the gas station could be if you're going off what Susan Atkins said, but it's anyway. So I heard about this and I, and when I started looking into Masaro again, because his name came up in the, uh, in the people fingerprinted for, for Cielo drive. Um, 
I was going through the FBI stuff and I, I saw his address and he was at 122 Horn Avenue. That is one second. Um, that's right here. That's the building that Massaro was in. Now, lots of Papa was busted there in 1970 for a fraud ring. And it was in this place, 1211 Horn Ave, which is also where Ed Durston, boyfriend of, uh, what's her name again? Um, I'm blanking. Mm. Uh, Linkletter, Diane yeah. Linkletter, yeah. who she was suicided by him, apparently. Um and he was, uh, and he was apparently he knew people up at Cielo. He was a, a dealer apparently. And then, last but not least, another person that was supposedly kicking around there, according to Tom O'Neill, is uh, Reeve Whitson was supposed to be in one two one seven, which is right next door, as you can see, to one two one one Horn Avenue. So, <clears throat> while I'm going through all this stuff, I happened upon. What, uh, the other link at the top there, that is somebody took pictures driving down Sunset Strip in 1973. And mm -hmm. the whole Sunset Strip. Here, I was able to go down there and kind of piece together where everything was. And I found these pictures. Because uh, after 1971, Tower Records was on the corner of Horn Avenue and Sunset Boulevard. So this is Tower Records on the left. And this building here, as you can see on the right, is not a gas station. And I was like, well, what the heck? And it wouldn't have been up in, in uh, up the road because it's a dead end and it's all residential up there. And then I, would, I looked around it to see if it was maybe on the other side of the road, but that again wouldn't have been Horn Avenue. So here's, hold on, we have the, um, I took a picture of the paragraph in the Manson file about the, uh, about Horn Avenue. And I'll read it so it kind of puts it more in context. All of my million screenshots. <laughs> um, Beckham, what are you doing? <laughs> Smiling really hard. Oh my Let's see God. here. Um, well, I did have it starred where I was going to find it really easy for this, but you know, such is life. That's all right. Oh, That's I found right. it. I found it. All right, here we go. So, Send it to yourself. I got it here. I got it here. Uh, so this is, again, from... Myth and Reality of an Outlaw Shaman by Nicholas Schreck. Um, but it's also in that, it's also in that other uh, link I put at the top. So for after Char whoa, after Charles Watson killed Sebring and hastily absconded from the scene with less drugs and loot than he'd hoped to nab, he didn't immediately drive back on the route to Spawn Ranch in Chatsworth. Instead, although he'd just committed a high-profile crime, as it was possible to commit, he took a never-explained roundabout detour in the opposite direction. Tex pulled out the old yellow Ford carrying this yellow crew into a gas station in West Hollywood to tank up on $2 of gas and wash away the blood from in the restrooms. That gas station was at the end of Horn Ave, which places Watson, Krenwinkel, Atkins, Kasabian on the same short street only hours after Frakowski brought Sebring's girlfriend to that very place, which is another thing that I forgot to mention that in the, in one of the police reports, it says that the girl that Frakowski dropped off for Sebring lived on Horn Ave as well. Susan Peterson. Susan Peterson. Yeah. So anyway, I was, I, I got interested and I was like, well, that's, that's interesting, but where's this gas station? And like I saw in 73, that building doesn't look brand new or anything. I was like, what the hell? Um, and then, so I started emailing a couple of people 
that it was possible was around at that time. And one of them was Ed Roach, who didn't remember. He said, he was, it was like, it was 1969, so of course. And the other was Pam DeBar. And I don't know if you know who she is. She was in the GTOs. And I had mentioned in the same sentence that it was the road that um, uh, Tower Records was on. And so she was like, no, there is the, uh, there's a gas station up by the whiskey, which is still there, which yep. is a different one, but it's still there. Um, and I was like, well, that's a little different than being right at the end of Horn Ave. Like it's still in the vicinity, which yep. is fine, but it said it was on Horn Ave and I wanted to, and so that to me, I'm just like, I was like, well, okay, but where is it? And so things stick in my craw sometimes, right? And so I keep looking and I found this video and I'm going to show you guys the video and then I'm going to go through the pictures and I'm going to show you what happened before we, uh, before we started the last show. Um, yeah, she wrote the book, I'm with the band, uh, about her time. Well, some of about her time as a group. She's written like five books. So yeah. Paul, you are jitting out a little bit. Am I? You're Am good. I good now? All yeah. right. You're good now. Um, okay. So I'm gonna play this video for you guys. And then yeah, we'll go through. So here this is Sunset Strip in 1967. with the music i'm sorry i tried <laughs> i love it yeah, it i, I was, so was kind of jamming out to it oh man it was too bad yeah was... Put welcome it back to on. the party what does that oh, say you... welcome to the party or come to the party okay come to the party all right fine i'll put the stupid music back <laughs> want you guys to know it sounds like band in a box <laughs> this is what i used to use to practice when i was in jazz school <laughs> in an accident mm -hmm. okay so i watched that <laughs> wow well, it ran a red light the car ran a red and light he, dude he ran a red light too i know it was so funny yeah it's just like whatever he was doing holding a camera the size of his fucking head driving down sunset um anyway so i watched that and i was like okay well where is this what are some of the landmarks that I can see. And so come to party. What was that? Yeah, come to party is one I saw. But one of the the first one I saw. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. The music. Okay. This is the first thing that stuck out to me. Cause that the building on the right with all the the like trim, the X's mm -hmm. on the trim and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. That that really stands out, right? Like that's right. a really so this is 67. So I started going through those pictures 
on the from 73 to see if I could find if I could find that place. And it seems to have erased the pictures. Fantastic. Okay, so <laughs> oh, you fucker. Anyway, all right, so you're just going to have to trust me on this one then. Uh um, I suppose we can. I don't know how the fuck it did that. You want us to kind of like anyway. just ba banter back maybe, and forth while you look Maybe for just them? vamp for a sec because I'm going to get those. I want to put those All up. right, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't me and Beckham have a dance party to that music again? Oh, yeah, I'll just keep loop playing it on a loop while we talk in the background. Oh yeah, no kidding. That'd be that'd be the way to do it, eh? Uh okay, so I'm going to look for the actual <laughs> site and find the pictures. Actually, no, you know what? It's going to take for fucking ever. I'm not doing that. Um, I I will put everything up on our page so that you can see it. Anyway, I found this building and I found its address. And so I looked, I looked at the address and I, uh, I was like, okay, so is this, so where's this in comparison to Horn Ave and which direction am I going? Mm -hmm. So I had to find this and I had to find another another place to uh, that that I could find. I started working my way back. That's when I said Doheny there. So I looked for Doheny and then I counted back to where this place was as far as roads go. I also used like Google Maps to see what the crossroads were from between Horn Ave and stuff. Now, <clears throat> I was going to get Danielle to read Susan Atkins, uh, uh, what she told Caruso and Caballero about what happened after the murders. But I could, it's, it's a lot. And this is this part right here. Like we may still do that this show, but this part here is what I thought was kind of interesting in it. She says, or uh, Caruso and Caballero, say after she mentions going down to horn ave they say like she said it was the gas station was across a, from a place that had funky cars which will show later why it sounded like it was somewhere else um mm -hmm. but he said oh is that near stefanino's and i was like well what the heck is stefanino's and it took me a while it took me a little while to find, to actually find Stefanino's. And it, I guess it was a restaurant or something like that. And that, it gave me the address. And so the address there is actually the building at the very end where the car almost crashes. So I was like, okay, so there's nothing really around there that's a gas station. And I looked now and I looked then and I looked in 73 and I was like, okay, so it's not there. And so doing all this stuff, I was totally convinced that the, uh, the gas station wasn't there. I was like, I think that somebody, whoever told Nicholas and whoever told these other people was like, was just saying shit. Mm -hmm. Um, because, and like I said about the other gas station, there's a gas station right near where the gun was tossed. And it's the place where uh, James Dean filled up his Porsche before, before getting in a crash. Uh, and right across from it is uh, a Cadillac store that had a whole bunch of crazy Cadillacs called Casa de Cadillac. And it's been open since 48 and so that was you know it's a still a possibility right it's right there it's a gas station it's in it's on the way up in the same direction and like it said in the manson file it's a weird like offshoot if they actually went down there and so i was like i don't know why they would unless it was it had something to do with horn ave there but there was nothing there and then right before we went on like right like minutes before we went on to do the show about there's no fucking gas station there i realized i finally like keep counting back and find the the building 
right next to, I guess it might have gotten rid of it. Um, we counted back to seeing the building that was next to Tower Records in 73 is the same building that was there in 67. So I found that building and it just so happens to be at the very start of this video. And this corner right here that you can see is the corner of Horn Ave. And what's that sign right there? That's the Texaco sign. And underneath is the price of gas, mm -hmm. which means that there was a gas station on the corner of Horn Ave. So whoever's like, whoever said that, you know, this stuff, uh, you know, there was, they went down to Horn Ave to this gas station. There is a gas station there. And there hasn't been since around like 71. Hmm. Right? Like it was only there before. So it's not something that people would like super remember. And there, it was going to be the no gas station episode, but there is the gas station right there on the corner of Horn Ave which is now it's not a gas station anymore it's um it's the same building as it was in 73. so i found that super interesting and we found out right before we went on so it was just like well we're doing something completely different now but it's there so uh what was i gonna say yeah so what was the somebody put something up that about the gas station and where it was uh, 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 uh. um well j cal 913 posted a link okay um doug smith says it's a classical gas you also said Doug, you said, isn't that the tr tr Troubadour? I don't know. Um, yes, that's, I believe that's where it is. It's the, hold on a sec here. I think I put up a picture of, yeah, I did. So right, that little, <laughs> you can't see where I'm pointing, but the last little dot before it goes way up and over to Spawn Ranch, which is, mm -hmm on the far top left, mm -hmm. that's where that, that was. It's, uh, 14325 Ventura. Ventura. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how long was that drive when you mapped it out? The drive to spawn. Yeah. Or yeah, from which little... way? Oh, the... whatever it told you whenever you did it. Yeah. That one just there, that was like 45 minutes. Mm. up to spawn just going that way but actually danny i will get you to read that thing because there's a couple of talking points in there that you know she says a bunch of different things that are very interesting that you could mm -hmm. yeah but i mean you know it's susan atkins so i, I know you gotta take it with a grain of salt i just want to quickly so anastasia put a link and then she's pamela debar does walking tours Oh, nice. She That's just did. Cool. She just did a thing in uh, in the Whiskey A Go Go the other night. It was some sort of show with hey, look me. Florentine Gardens. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you got that, oh. Danny? Yeah. So okay. So Susan Atkins. Um, so this is between uh, Paul Crusoe, Susan Atkins, but other people come in to play, and I'll, I'll read that as it happens. So Susan Atkins says, um, in regards to Paul Caruso asking about the reserve, she says, something like deputy reserve. He belonged to the Sheriff's Department of Los Angeles County, and he was going to report this. What are you doing? And Tex just looked at them, smiled, and said, quote, we're just getting a drink of water. Sorry we disturbed you, end quote. And the old man said, quote, is that your car down there? 
end, end quote. And Tech said, quote, no, we're walking, end quote. And the man, there's going to be a lot of quotes, so you, you get it. Mm -hmm. And the man said, I know that's your car down there. Uh, Tech said, okay, girls, get in the car, and we double fast walk to the car. Now, all the weapons were not in the car. Before we went to that house, we went for a drive up Mahalan Drive. Before we went to the house to wash off. We went for a drive and we drove along the side of a deep embankment. I don't remember where it was. It was dark and I didn't pay any attention. And Linda had all the weapons. Yes. So part of that is interesting and it's going to go, she's going to go a little more into that, but she says that they took off and drove around for a bit and then went to Rudolph Weber's. Now Weber says that they were there right around one o'clock. So if they had left, you know, uh, Cielo between 12.30 and 12.45, then that only gives them about 15 minutes mm -hmm. to drive around. Now, if they drove around a little bit, there's a possibility they went around. Yeah, anyway, you can read more, but there's a possibility they went around where those knives were found on the back of Sunbrook mm -hmm. and drove around that way trying to, she'll talk about trying to find a dark driveway. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say she does say that, yeah. Um, so Linda had all the weapons, all but one knife, up in the front seat, and Tex said, does anybody have a white rag? In order that if somebody saw us throwing something, we could throw the white rag while we were throwing things out the window. And we proceeded to throw all of the clothes. We stopped one time, Linda got out of the car, and threw the car, all the clothes over the side of the embankment. Um, Paul Caruso says on Mulholland Drive. Susan Atkin says on Mulholland Drive. I believe that's the road. Paul Caruso says you were on Benedict Canyon. That's where the Cielo Drive address was. How far was the second house from the Tate house? Susan Atkin says, I don't know. I have no idea. We drove around quite a bit. I wasn't paying any attention. I was just stunned. Caballero says, Susan, before we leave that point, when you say you got rid of all the weapons, did that include the gun? And Susan Atkin says, yes. Caballero says, now, if you were going to go with me in a car and we were to leave that house, do you think that by sense of direction, you might get me anywhere near where the gun was actually thrown? And Susan says, I don't know. Paul Cruz. One says, sec. Yes. So, so she starts by saying that they went up to Mulholland Drive and doubled back to Rudy Weber's place, mm -hmm. right? And that, that she threw the gun out on Mulholland Drive, but the gun was actually thrown off of Benedict Canyon. So she's, I mean, she's mixed up where she is. And you'll see, too, the way she explains it is is Benedict Canyon. Like, the, you'll, you'll see through that. But it's interesting that she, they, she says that they got rid of everything before they went to Weber's. Mm -hmm. Anyway, go ahead. Thank you for letting me continue. Yeah, don't don't <clears throat> let it happen again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jerk, I'll kick you off your own show. <laughs> so Paul Caruso asks, do you recall if you went east or west? Susan says, I don't know. Tex was driving. I just sat in the back seat, slumped down. Paul Caruso says, do you think if we got you in the car and left from that residence that you might have some general feeling of, you might be able to develop a picture for yourself? Susan says, well, I've got a picture in my mind and all it shows me is the side of the mountain and the road. Caballero says, that's what I thought, that you would be able to say this looks like the spot. And Susan says, yes. Caruso says, Dick, do you have a good idea? Susan, where were you sitting in the car? Atkins says, in the passenger side of the back seat. Caruso, okay, so you were in the right rear. Was the mountain to your left or was it to your right? Yeah. Okay. Susan says the mountain was to my left and the embankment, the hill going down was to my right. Caruso, that's very encouraging. That's good. That's a big help. Atkins. And then after when we disposed of all the weapons, then we continued to drive until we got down to a residential area. I know it was close to Sunset Boulevard. Then we got in the car and the man and the woman were walking behind us and we were walking fast. Text got that's the So she jumps back there to where they're at Rudy Weber's. Yes. But she says they went down by sunset. And she said, unless I biffed out there, because I was laughing at what they said on the side there, um, that when the, the hill was on her left and the drop off was on her right. 
So everything's all backwards because the hill being on her left and the drop off being on her right means she's driving to she's driving away from sunset on Benedict Canyon over to where the gun and the clothes and stuff were thrown off. But she also says that they went down to Sunset Boulevard and this is when they start getting into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But she also said that they went up to Mulholland Drive and then doubled back down to a residential area and went to Rudy Weber's. Could it be that they went up there and doubled back, went to Rudy Weber's, and then went down to Horn Ave? Or did they go to that other gas station? You never know. Anyway, um, go ahead. Yeah, so Susan continues on um, describing text got in the car and started it. And the woman kept saying, take their driver's license number. But we didn't, but he didn't have anything to write it down with. He got in the car and started it. And the man came up and reached in to take the keys. Evidently, he knew there was something suspicious going on. And Tex flooded the car, put it in low and took off. Practically broke the man's hand from what I could see. I just flashed, wow, that was a strange house to pick out of all the houses. And then we drove down the road and made a couple of turns. Why did I say? Oh. Danny, I can't hear you. Your voice disappeared. My computer has a oh, light of its go. own right now. Sorry, folks. All right, all right, all is well. Um, so she says that they drove down the road made a couple of turns and stopped at a gas station. The purpose for stopping at the gas station was we were almost out of gas. We bought some gas and the three of us girls took turns going into the bathroom, checking for blood spots and making sure we were clean. Tex did the same, but all the way out, I noticed there was blood on the car and I hoped that nobody had seen it. When we got back to the ranch, we got out of the car, went directly to the cafe, which was our in Caruso interrupts hangout. Susan, yes. The whole ranch was my hangout, our home. And I went into the kitchen and got a rag and proceeded to wipe down the whole car for blood. I didn't know where it was, but I knew if there was any, it would be the steering wheel and on the handles. Well, I didn't touch anything else. Charlie came out and said, what are you doing home so early? Tex and Charlie walked off and talked. We went down to the end of the boardwalk and went into what we call the bunkhouse. And there was Brenda, who's known as Nancy Pittman, and Katie and Linda and Tex and Charlie, and we all sat back. I almost passed out. Caballero asks, what was Linda's last name? Atkins says, I don't know Linda's last name. She hasn't been with us for very long. Caruso, Susan, do you recall where you came out on Sunset Boulevard? She just says, well. Caruso, do you know Beverly Hills very well or Hollywood or near uh, Scandia? She says it was down further. Caruso clarifies, you mean West towards Beverly Hills, Atkins, you know, the auto store that has all the far out cars. And that was Paul, the auto store that you that just is, showed just for context. Well, that was, no, that's the one that's across from the one up in Sherman Oaks. Is okay. that the right? Okay. And then you can't see in the, like, if you look on here, you can see that that's like a little cafe or something right on the across the street but we can't see anything further back mm. so i don't know so i can't say if okay. there's a car thing there or not but i know that there's a gas station there so yes. yeah anyway go ahead yeah. so at this point is i know paul mentioned earlier um stefanino's so at this point caruso says oh on sunset boulevard near stefanino's do you know where stefanino's is and she responds, I think so. And when we got back to the ranch, I almost passed out. I was sitting there trying to pay attention to what Charlie was saying, and I just couldn't handle it. I laid back on the floor, and I felt as though I was being killed. Caruso, I'm sorry, Caruso, sorry. Caruso says like a seance, and Atkins says, yes, it was. Then I went in and laid down. Um, let's see. I think that was about it. Isn't yeah, it? that was it. I was just yeah. double checking. Okay, yeah. that was it. So, so she says a few different things there. She puts them up on Mulholland. She thought that that's where they threw stuff out. She says that the, you know, when she says that they were going a different direction than she sit, then she was talking about the. 
okay, sorry. I'm going to start that again. Um, when she's talking about the hill being on the left and the drop being on the right, she's talking about going on a different direction than going back from Mulholland. Because if she was driving down Benedict Canyon uh, from Mulholland, then it would be the opposite. The, the mountain would be on her right and the drop off would be on the left. So that's where it's like, okay, well, that's weird. I mean, all of it's weird. But then she says they went down to sunset. There's all this stuff that happens. There's no real like timeline they're able to figure out with it because, um, and we, I mean, we don't know if, if Weber made a mistake, he said around one o'clock, right? Like how long does it take to, how long does it take to drive up to Mulholland and back? There's, it's, uh, yeah. It is, is it possible they used to have amateur car shows at the cafe across from the Texaco station? Car shows were popular along Sunset in the day. It could be. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so, I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think about this? Does Does the fact that there is a gas station there change those, like, what's said about them going down there for you? I I get torn each time I think about it. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I really try to not become too like married to a theory at this point, because I feel like each time I do, there's just something different that shows like, all right, maybe that's not exactly it and points in another mm -hmm. direction. So I don't know. This is one I just keep going back and forth with. Mm -hmm. Beckham, you've been a little silent tonight, and people in the chat are wondering what's going on. Is, is there anything you want to add about that or what your thoughts are? You're muted, hon. Oh, you're muted. You're still muted. There. There you go. There yeah. we go. To me, it just... um. The relevance of time and the timeline, um, you know, if, if when they got back and that kind of thing would be important for me um, because anytime I work on a case, even the time setting the timeline is one of the most important things uh, in a in a investigation. Um, and it's uh, something that you need to do as quickly as possible. Um, but, of course, we know that it wasn't properly done in this case. So it just adds like to Danielle's point. It kind of like, like, well, you know, where, what time were they there, or did they take longer? Did they, they did they get there quicker, or, you know, because that's important. That's important. Mm -hmm. be, I mean, it's a it's an important piece of information that's missing because, um, you know, when did they get back, and if they and then was there enough time for somebody to come back? Because you hear about the noises and all that commotion in the middle of the night also up there. So, um, for me some kind of discretion or concrete it's good to look at because it can kind of give you something more uh valid or have something valid you know with you know more concrete. validity yeah, yeah exactly to what the what you're trying to um look into and and this is to me would be time you know mm -hmm. access to the timeline so for this me, is an interesting way. one for me for to uh Jake, chris <coughs> james's point of maybe there was something else there by 69. I mean, you know, maybe, but it seems it like that it was said that it was told to to them to the the person who wrote that article and the and to Nicholas Shrek that means it was there, right? Yeah. And and that so it, it you know, it's more likely with the information we have now that it was there in 69 than it wasn't. But the problem is we have 67, so we have two years before and yeah. four years after. Those are the two pictures we have. But two years before, there was a gas station on the corner of Horn Ave. Hmm. So it's an interesting one. Yeah. And I remember when we drove, we, we literally did that on when we went, what, a year and a half ago now? Or mm -hmm. no, a year ago. A year ago. Um, we literally did the drive to kind of, you know, put in, put our own timeline in a sense together. And you even 
were like you acknowledged paul i remember you like saying yeah man this would be one hell of a drive back yep. yeah you know to get everything yeah, everything like, there is right. 45 I mean, minutes it seems right to well, get right. anywhere and, and and that would be you know what kind of traffic what kind of vehicle you know i mean would that make would that really have made a made a difference we don't know right but you see what i'm saying i mean it does make you ponder that mm -hmm. oh absolutely but, but police should have been on this immediately and i'm surprised that they did not you're really surprised just, well, I mean, but yeah, because you're, you know, I mean, they were professionals at the time. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, they were they, like. I love your glass have full attitude. I really do. Oh, this, this chick. Okay. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to show you guys this website that from 73 or the website's not from 73, obviously, but the pictures um we need to anastasia makes a good point there was less traffic back then i'm pretty sure the streets were more cleared out yeah yeah okay that so car was probably reading. super loud da, 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> so if you look like they, what does this say it starts at for the people who uh who know this area. The drive this era is very familiar. Uh, oh, it doesn't say right there. Where, drive starts where Sunset meets Pacific Coast Highway in Pacific Palisades. So all this stuff, this is all from 73, but it's like Horn is like about halfway down. So I'll let it catch up. My computer's a giant bag of crap. Yeah, TurboTax um, is going hard on the side with ads. My God. Oh, yeah. Oh, they love it. They're loving this right now. Um, this... Talk about free advertisement. My God. I know. I should sponsor the podcast. <laughs> I try to find my place here, but I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to find um, the spot in any sort of time. But it's it goes down the whole thing. It's really interesting. And for anybody who knows, you know, Sunset Strip to any degree, it'll be interesting to them to see all uh, how it changed. And there's so many of these, like, there's a bunch of different, like, videos and stuff. And, yeah, it's really interesting, really neat. Was anyway. that one of the ones that you pinned earlier? Yeah, that's one of the ones that I pinned at the top, if you all want to go check it out. Yeah, I think people should. I think, like, old photos like that are absolutely fascinating and it really just gives a perspective how how much time has changed so much mm -hmm. it looks like night and day um, but there was like when we did go just to go back to Beckham's point it was interesting to see some of the few landmarks that still remained that was interesting hi Phil a, if you go through those pictures and then you go and uh and and do the like street view of the place a lot of those buildings are exactly the same mm -hmm. they've had a little bit of an addition to them but a bunch of them are still the same yeah there you go a bunch of stuff up there it's sweet they've got so before before uh tower records was tower records because i was curious about that side of the street i was like maybe there was something there but it was a uh it was a stereo shop before that. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Anything else major you all want to talk about? There's a whole lot of check out that I haven't even read that whole article up top with the uh, that mentions the Horn Ave thing. It's long and it's got a lot of the it's got a lot of the mob stuff in it as well. So it'd be it'll be interesting. For, uh, for the people into that side of things as well. Well, you know what? Let's let's do a long show tonight. I think you should read it. I would like something that would help, help me get me fast asleep tonight. And Lord knows you reading would do that. So I'm uh -huh. down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Bucks discount stereo. 
Anyway, go ahead. Oh, man. No, I was going to say, one of the other, so besides, I know Paul mentioned the Whiskey A Go-Go was nearby. Also nearby there is the Viper Room. The Viper Room is the next road over in Larrabee, right by Larrabee Street, which is the next one over from Horn Ave, which is another, uh, which was, I found that road on those pictures and the building that's right, right there is also in that video we watched and it's right there. And that also helped as a landmark to be able to count back to the corner to figure out it was Horn Ave. Mm -hmm. Oh, fiddle, knock it off. <laughs> I mean, people are talking um, like, you, you know, at that time of night, you can get anywhere with 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But still you go down. So you're thinking like, depending on if they tell the truth of what time they right. got back to the ranch, yeah. right? Then you got to, then you put everything in there and like when it all happened, uh, you know, 20 minutes down, 20 minutes back up. I would say maybe 30. I don't know. 30 down to horn yeah. from, from Cielo. No, no. Maybe. I mean, yeah. 30 round yeah. trip. Well, cause you got to go down. So if you think about it, right. you, you kind of come down and then have to go over to go to Horn. And then you'd have to come back and then go up. Unless, yeah, because I don't know how they talk about going around and then coming back down Mulholland all the way down to where Rudy Weber was. And then did they go down again? And then they went back up? Yeah, because remember, remember I was yeah. telling you how when I was, uh, when we were at the Cielo that, at night, it, mm -hmm. I wanted it to take me back through the beverly hills way and it didn't it took me around the mountain dude and mm -hmm. oh my god it was just a loop a loop a loop and I, you couldn't really drive fast because it's super dark and mm -hmm. you got to see where you're going right so it just took me it took me like 15 minutes to get down at loan exactly how the fuck would they good point clifford yeah good point you know, Clifford uh, adds a lot to this show. I say does. we get, let's yeah. One of you guys got to go. I say okay, we get, rid, get of rid of me. Get rid of me. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Replace uh, with Clifford. Uh, let's see what did Anastasia say. I like those drive-through videos. One from the 1940s, L.A. and Chatsworth, where Lucy and Desi had a ranch, very rural, <laughs> dirt roads, where the family lived, the yellow submarine. There's so many ranches. There's another ranch involved in this that was on a piece of paper. We'll talk about at some point. I don't even know what the ranch had to do with them. Maybe another one that they were working at, like Melba's. But there are so many ranches. Um, oh, man. Yeah, when, when Atkins said that it was, but that's as far as that goes. But when they got back to the mm. ranch. Yeah. Mm. Maybe in the dash. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I always get this like pause when people say Susan said this or Akin says this. I'm, not that you can trust what anybody well, anybody says necessarily, but like her in particular, there just seems to be so much more irregularities with her statements that I just, I like pause when someone says, Oh, well she said this. I'm like, Ooh. everybody, but it's with, for me, it's everybody. There's there's zero reliable witness. Oh no no no! I agree. I'm just saying be. she just she's, seems to have. It's pointed out quite a bit the inconsistencies with her. Right. But there's, no, I completely agree with you. Completely. Agree yeah. With you. There's. I think there's just as many with Watson and just as many with all of them. I think that Susan gets the brunt of it because yeah, she fucking. Well, I mean, everybody said she was a big liar pants, right? Everyone was was saying that she. Uh, She'd always make shit up. I mean, look at that that video of Manson where he said that uh, she she wrote three books, said three different things. And then he also, the the classic one that we put up where he talks about the girls didn't kill anyone. She couldn't even kill a dickhead, right? <laughs> That's what he said. I, oh, I know, I know. I, I just I was, wasn't expecting that right now, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I gotta find. I gotta find that clip. We gotta play that clip. Yeah, you sure do. Yeah, I'll be right. Um, so, is it um, on our Facebook page? Is that where I put it? Oh God, I can't remember. I'll see. 
Brent back, hello. He says, wasn't there a clock on the mantle? At Cielo? Yeah, they saw, well, apparently they saw the time at Cielo. Yeah, let's not forget. Thank you, Clifford Crawford. We have not talked about this in what, over a year? The dump in the stairwell? Yes. Yes, oh yes. God. Those were the good old days of the Paul Cash show. <laughs> yeah. David Ward, hello, says you got to find the clip of what Manson said of Susan when sending her somewhere. Um. Paul can only work so quickly, and he's on Canadian time. So, yeah, we're all screwed. Uh, let's see. There was something else somebody said. Johnny Man has a good way to tell time here. They knew the time by looking at Pat's five o'clock shadow. Oh. <laughs> I oh. think that's funny. Uh, what is Russell saying? Someone needs to do with the testimony and subsequent statements from the killers and compare them side by side. We're working on it. I was about to say that. Yeah. Really? Working on it. Really, and it's James? not an overnight thing, I assure you. Uh, let's All right, here we go. He said send her to get a coconut. Yes. This is so, there's German overdub. And I, like, I don't think that he's, because Krenwinkel talked about killing someone and all that stuff. But this is Roastmaster General Manson here. Hold on a sec. Go. You ready? Lassen Sie mich die Wahrheit erzählen. Die Mädels haben niemanden umgebracht. Ich sage es Ihnen, die Mädels haben keinen umgebracht. Sie starben auf ein paar Leute ein, die bereits tot waren. Wie starben sie denn? Tex tötete sie. Er wurde völlig wahnsinnig und brachte jeden um, den er fand. Susan Atkins sagte, ich war es. Susan Atkins hat gar nicht die Fähigkeit, so etwas zu tun. Sie ist zu nichts fähig. Sie lügt, wo sie kann. Sie stiehlt. Sie ist völlig sexbesessen. Dafür tut sie alles. Das ist alles, was sie im Kopf hat. Auch bei mir ging es immer nur darum, nicht um den Kopf. Da habe ich nicht viel Mann. Habe ja nichts gelernt. Wenn ich nur ein Fünkchen Verstand hätte, wäre ich schon längst draußen. When she was falling down, what did she grab a hold of? Boom! That's what she grabbed a hold of. Not here, because I don't have nothing here, guy. I got third grade education upstairs. If I had any brains at all, I'd been out of here a long time ago. Ooh. I love that. That's so fucked up. <laughs> the tech so stab. Crazy. How many people? Like 300 times? Or however many? Oh, I, so many. Yeah. Times. Oh, right. Oh. All right. I'm glad you guys in the chat are and watching and are enjoying that as much as yeah, I know, right? Rick Kranz is classic. Classic. That's just like that's wild. That is a wild what is said fuck. It's a good note to go out on. All right. You guys have anything else you want to add? It's kind after of after that, and... I don't know what there is to say. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, one interesting thing before we go, I was listening to some interviews with uh, Brian Wilson because I was just interested in some Beach Boys stuff. And uh, he gets asked, he gets asked about the 2020 album and Never Learn Not to Love. And he's like, I love that song. He's like, my brother Dennis wrote that song. And that's all he says about it. But he says really, like, really affectionately, I love that song. And that's funny because that's the Manson song that's mm -hmm. on 2020. And Wilson had said about 2020 that it was kind of the, the most disjointed effort of the group. So he was kind of, he was a little more harsh on that album. And it, maybe it was just because of the uh, association. But you never know. Did you talk about Kokomo? He did talk about Coco. No, he didn't talk about Coco. I did listen to them talk about Kokomo, though, and it's so funny how many people wrote that song. It was John Phillips and Mike Love and uh, Terry Melcher. 
and each one of them wrote part of it and and terry melcher produced it and it was a huge hit for them this huge hit but it's funny that like the way mike love puts himself in there about like i wrote the lyrics it's like what did you write he's like well i said aruba jamaica <laughs> i was like oh so that's that's what you did uh, that's what you added thanks mike love thanks for, oh, man. what would you expect from anybody else i mean summer of love there you go yeah enough hey. said mm -hmm. all right you guys well i hope you enjoyed tonight's show uh what did we learn tonight there was a gas station on the corner of horn ave it was a texaco and gas was 30 something cents so and now you have to trade in your first child and you also have to give four quarts of blood to get uh five dollars in gas so <laughs> <laughs> thank you inflation thank you bureaucracy <laughs> we're the paul cast and we'll see you next time <laughs> good night everyone we'll see you next wednesday Good night, everybody. Bye.